like to talk to you today about how might education mediate difference and dominance. I'd like to draw your attention to an article that was printed recently in the Sydney Morning Herald, following on from events that happened a few years ago, which highlighted difference and dominance in an Australian context, and challenged the community idea of what types of behaviours actually constitute racism in the Australian community. In the days leading up to the Cronulla riots, media personality Radio's 2GB, Alan Jones, voiced inflammatory comments about an incident that occurred at a public meeting in which Sheikh Fayez Muhammad, a prominent Muslim leader, made provocative comments in a sermon, in a sermon to the Lebanese Muslim community. In his sermon, he stated that women invited violent attacks upon themselves by dressing inappropriately when in public. And by the way, his interpretation of inappropriate dressing was for women to dress in shorts or miniskirts and singlet tops where they exposed too much flesh. The events were, re were reported widely across the Australian media and it was agreed by the majority reporting that Muhammad's point of view was extreme and not the mainstream view of the Lebanese community. However, on his radio show, Alan Jones used his radio program as a forum to publicly to condemn the Muslim community for this statement and incited his listeners to hate and hold the Lebanese Muslim community and Lebanese males in serious contempt. Reacting to jo Jones's on-air statement, Kaiser Trad, who is a leading member of the Lebanese Muslim Association, lodged a complaint of racial vilification with the New South Wales Administrative Decisions Tribunal regarding the comments. The complaint was lodged in 2004, but due to legal issues, not heard until 2009. Recently, the tribunal upheld Trad's complaints of racial vilification against both Jones and 2GB. The tribunal condemned Jones's broadcasting techniques as reckless hyperbole, which was calculated to agitate and excite his audience and decree damages to be paid and apologies made. This event illustrates the cultural assumptions of a dominant group, and in this case the dominant group would be Alan Jones and the media, as an acceptance that violence as a form of retaliation when somebody offends them is okay for the dominant group. And as a result, the status and behaviour of the minority group, the Lebanese community, was defined judged and stereotyped by the accepted norms of the dominant group. I think that these events exemplify the need to educate and teach Australian youth, as well as older generations, that it's not a matter of tolerance, which we need to overcome, but a matter of acceptance and respect for all people regardless of what religion, culture or whether or not one's parents were born on these shores. We also need to be aware of where we locate ourselves on the race axis of identity and we must find ways to reduce the difference between the views that we have of who is dominant and who are the minority groups on this axis. So in order to achieve an understanding of what constitutes racist behaviour, it's essential to be able to identify when and where it occurs. And this is where I believe education can assist in enlightening people to analyse and reflect on their current behaviours. The first thing is to identify and investigate different forms of racism that can occur either directly, indirectly or institutionally. This can be illustrated by using news reports for case studies such as the one that I used as an example, and would also help students identify where racism occurs and the context that it occurs in. We could use the Wheel of Discrimination activity. Now that's from a book that I was reading on race and racism in Australia. Um, and by using this, we would identify individual and institutional racism, and by looking at discrimination throughout the lifespan and, and how it occurs, its causes and effects on the minority group. By using short question and answers activities, um, the questions that you might ask the group would be, 
Who wasn't born in Australia? Has anyone lived in another country? Who speaks more than one language? What cultural activities do you and your family participate in? How do you see yourself in the wider community? And what does it mean to you to be an Australian? And, all, and the last one, what is the most important aspect of living in Australia? Now these, these answers will be generated by all different sorts of people and they will have all different kinds of input into this. So this exercise and the discussions that may follow will help students explore difference and diversity in the classroom by sharing their stories, their points of view, their values and beliefs and then they may find that they have a lot of them in common. Another activity could be to look at case studies where racism has occurred and the different strategies that were employed to cope with these situations. Uh, there is a newsletter that is actually generated by Human Rights and Equal Opportunity Commission, commission that you can actually find on, on the web and I've actually got the web address at the end of this presentation. The strategies that I suggested could be used with minor modifications for all levels from young children to mature age students because I realise that a lot of people may be teaching in classes where they have people come to their class with all these preconceived ideas and views on how they, they view racism. In conclusion, racism disempowers people by devaluing their identity. It also destroys community cohesion and creates divisions in society. Education can help mediate difference and dominance by giving people the information and background to move from the offensive practice of tolerating minority groups to the more accepted practice of accepting and respecting and valuing these groups without stereotyping and making judgments. Thank you for your time.